Hey folks, Guns Gear on target training out here in Oregon. Before we get started, if you enjoy our content, please like, share, and subscribe. Above all, comment. That's where we get to engage with uh, everyone and we get to share ideas, learn, and collectively expand our horizons. <laughs> all right. Today I want to talk about two very interesting uh, micro compacts. The first being the SIG P365XL and the second being the Glock 43X. So I'm going to talk through some of the specifications of the guns. We'll show you both of them and then give you my opinion on how they're different pros and cons to each one. We're going to start with the SIG P365XL. So right out of the box, what's nice about the SIG is it has really great, uh, they call them X-ray sights, but they're basically tritium iron sights. And the sights work fantastic. The big green dot in the middle, two small tritium inserts on the rear. So as you're coming out to, the, to point, you see that big green dot in the front. Fabulous. The SIG is also set up with the ability, there's a plate here, right, that goes over the top of the slide, and we can remove this and have a micro red dot. I ran it with a red dot for a while and ultimately went back to just running it with irons. Feels good to me. It works fine. Awesome. We have front and rear serrations, right, on the slide. We also have a frame, and this is a really, really well designed, and uh, in my mind, the shape of the frame here and the undercut here make this pistol very, very ergonomic in my hand, at least. It's also a very narrow profile. It comes, if you live in a state without magazine restrictions. It comes with two 12 round magazines and you can purchase aftermarket magazines like, well, this is by SIG, but it's a 15 round magazine. So, you know, with this now I've extended the frame quite a bit. The other option you can do, which is quite nice, um, are the mag guts mag, um, springs, which don't look like, they look like an accordion fan. They don't look like the normal springs that you have. And as a result, they give you two more rounds in a 12 round magazine, so 14 rounds, so you get 14 plus one. The trigger is this trigger that is slightly forward and it breaks at 45 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that to you. So it breaks right here. And this gun now has, I don't know, 2,000 rounds or more through it. So the trigger is broken in. I've done nothing to the gun other than clean it, lube it, and shoot it a couple thousand rounds. And from an everyday carry standpoint, it's one of my favorite everyday carry pistols. The barrel length itself is 3.7 inches. The weight without the magazine is just over 20 ounces. So again, qu quite small, relatively light weight, and with its um, lower than normal bore axis, right? SIGs traditionally, if you shoot any of the SIG um, hammer-fired guns, the bore axis is actually not as low as the Glock. And in fact, for me, I get, it feels like more perceived muzzle flip. Still, this has been a fabulous carry pistol. Like micro compacts, shooting this pistol lot isn't as enjoyable as a full-size range gun, but I do practice with it. I do shoot my defensive carry ammo, you know, I shoot a box of defensive carry ammo every couple of months, the stuff that I carry, just to stay, um, you know, consistent with that. Feeds everything. Been great have had no issues, no stoppages that I didn't introduce. Cons to this pistol. 
The biggest con for me is this very, very hard to get to mag release button. So for me, maybe not for you, but when it's in my hands and I'm trying to come up and punch this out or punch it out here, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not easy to get to. Not easy to get to. That's really the only con. Uh, again, I think it's very nice. Let's take a look at the Glock 43X. This is the MOS version. So I have added a green dot optic. This is the Holosun EPS with the 6 MOA green dot. I really like that. And because of that, I've also added suppressor height iron sight. So in the event the optic goes down, I still have sights. Now, somebody recently commented and I, you know, it's, it's an observation that, well, red dots don't fail very often. So why would you even bother swapping out the sights? Well, that's totally fine. If he wants not to do that and just go with the red dot. Awesome. For me, I've seen red dots fail. I've seen them fail in classes. Um, I've had one fail, uh, you know, just on the range. Um, so they can, you know, they're a mechanical electronic device that can fail. So in my opinion, backup iron sights are important. All right, back to the Glock 43X. The Glock comes with two 10 round magazines and um, you know, that's fine. Do I think 10 rounds and another 10 rounds is, is sufficient capacity? For sure. Absolutely. If you can't get it done with your first 10 rounds, um, you're probably outnumbered dramatically and your marksmanship skills are not doing what you need to be able to do. So do I prefer more capacity? Sure. And if you want to go with more capacity, of course, you have things like the shield arms, 15 round mags. Now I typically carry that in either the Glock 48 or the Glock 43 because I like having a 15 plus one capacity, but you know, Oregon was going down a path. They may, may still go down the path of, you know, stopping any magazine with more than 10 rounds because we know as soon as you get 11th round in that magazine, that's when people go crazy. So <laughs> go figure. We have a shorter barrel here. It's 3.41 inches versus what we have with the P365 XL. The overall slide length is 6.06 .06 inches. And we'll compare it right now to the SIG. And you can see the SIG is just slightly longer. Deal breaker? Nah, not at all. Um, might you gain a tiny bit of velocity um, in the longer barrel? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm not sure that, you know, quarter inch difference is going to make a huge difference. Again, what is the purpose of this pistol? It's defensive. It is not, I'm not trying to get the highest possible velocities out of there. And so it is a defensive um, tool. What else? It's, it's a Glock, right? It goes bang. We have on the slide, just like we showed you with the SIG, front and rear serrations. Again, some people like serrations when they press check and it gives you something to grab onto. I don't check. Uh, I don't want my hands anywhere near the muzzle of a firearm. So that's me. I tend to press check from back here and that works great. But if you like that, cool. You got those serrations. As I mentioned, it is a Glock. So it has those Glock things that some people hate and some people love. Some people do not like the grip angle of the Glock. They feel that this bump right here, this hump on the uh, frame is uncomfortable. Now, what I would note is this feels, and again, subjective, should probably get out some micrometer here and actually measure it, but it feels narrower in the grip when we look at the SIG in comparison right next to it. So it's um, definitely a tad narrower. You can also tell by the magazine well on the SIG. 
and on the Glock. So again, very, very Glock-ish. But it, I, I've shot Glocks long enough, <laughs> other striker-fired guns, but I've shot the Glocks a lot, like tens of thousands of rounds through multiple Glock pistols. And they work. They're reliable. Some people like get really hung up on brand like this. It shouldn't, we shouldn't like Glocks or we shouldn't like H&Ks or we shouldn't like CZs. Like whatever. I, it works for me. It's a freaking tool, guys. It is. Not, I'm not wedded to this or any other tool. I just want a few things in a defensive pistol. One, reliability. Two, long-term performance. So I want some track record of it hanging uh, around and performing. Three, I want combat effective accuracy. I get all of that in the Glock or in the SIG. Both pistols meet that. Some people are really hung up on, you know, triggers and does the trigger work. Since this pistol is new and I only put 350 rounds through it, I can't really say much. I mean, it is a stock lock trigger. It's that five and a half, kind of squishy up front. You know, the reset is tactile. I mean, it's, it, it's a Glock trigger. Do I think this trigger is okay for what's intended purposes is? Yeah, because this is not a range gun where I'm trying to, you know, compete or, you know, ring steel or whatever it is. I mean, can I do that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. But again, I, I, I think triggers like sights or subjectives and, you know, people get really upset about talking about, oh, well, I want to upgrade or change this out. The story behind this pistol, folks, I did not buy this pistol. I bought it in a raffle. I think it, there was, I bought 10 tickets or something for, you know, a dollar each. So for, for $10, I just happened to be lucky enough at this gun show to win this 43X MOS. So I'm like, well, because of that, <laughs> I'm going to actually put some tools on it, like suppressor height, you know, night sights and the, the red dot, green dot, um, that I want. So it wasn't like I went out, bought this pistol specifically and said, oh, I'm going to punt a bunch of more money into it. But, you know, one of the cool things, if you enjoy firearms, is being allowed... <laughs> Like if you have the money and you have the time, you know, to, to do some modifications that end up working for you. Now, my recommendation, if you are new to shooting or new to concealed carry, is first and foremost, pick the handgun you're going to use. Get training and shoot and practice and get more training. You will not develop a level of proficiency with any tool if you don't get training and practice. Practice is essential. And I don't mean just firing thousands and thousands of rounds. I mean, that's fun. I love to do it. But I mean the boring kind of practice sitting out here you know, in my shed, presenting the gun, coming up onto a safe target, pressing the trigger, doing it again. Comfortable. So, okay, what don't I like? Well, what I don't like about Glocks is the trigger guard. I have other guns like this one that have that undercut. I cannot tell you how much more comfortable it is because what happens when I shoot this pistol, you know, a lot like I did the other day for, you know, a couple of hours and 300 rounds or so is this knuckle, the middle knuckle right up here, my middle finger, is just get, you know rubbing up against that. Some people are like, oh, don't be such a sissy, you know, suck it up. Uh, okay, I'm just <laughs> telling you though, guys, like that's not fun. That is not fun. Other than that though, it, you know, it works. It actually has a better mag release than the SIG, in my opinion, much easier to find and much easier to get to than the SIG. It's not flush against the gun, almost like the SIG is. I mean, sometimes it's just difficult to get that. Both the SIG and the Glock have rails or the ability to attach lasers, lights, whatever paraphernalia you want there, pros and cons, right, to having um, a weapons mounted light. Yes, you can see what you point the muzzle of the gun at, but I have to point the muzzle of the gun maybe at something I don't want to. 
So for me, I typically don't run lights on carry compact carry guns. Now I have lights on defensive pistols that are in the home, full-size defensive pistols, uh, and those work great. But for EDC, I, that's not what I want. You want it, rock on, brother, sister, whatever works for you, that's awesome. So in summary, I think both of these pistols are up to the task of EDC. I think both of them are well-made. I think both of them, you know, have proven to me to be reliable, durable, and provide combat effective accuracy. Hmm. Is there a winner? No, there's not a winner. Uh, whatever works for you. If you love this pistol and it works for you and you practice with it, you train with it, rock on. If you're a SIG fan and the only pistol you'll ever shoot is the SIG, awesome. Rock on, brother. That's fantastic. I don't care. What I care about is people who have trained and develop enough proficiency so they can hit the threat with whatever shots they need to neutralize that threat in a defensive situation. So those are my thoughts, guys. Two fine pistols. Pistols that you, I think, could bet your life on in the gravest extreme. Well, folks, that's all I got for you today. I really appreciate each and every one of you, especially those who've subscribed recently. That's helping the channel. We are so close. We're like 800 subscribers away from the 100,000 uh, magic, 100,000 subscriber mark. So if you want to help the channel, help support the channel, please share it with your friends and family and invite them to subscribe. We welcome everyone. We love all input, all ideas that are delivered in a respectful manner. Uh, I try to respond to all the comments, all of the feedback, because generally I am interested in learning as well as sharing my perspective with subscribers. Sometimes they disagree with me. That's okay. Sometimes I disagree with them. That's okay. But we're having a conversation. So let's keep that conversation going. All right. That's all I got. Thanks so much. Finally. And as always, stay safe. SIG P365XL. Now we're going to do the same with our Glock 43X. Two very different triggers. Very similar groupings, our SIG, which is a little more broken in, the Glock right here, several shots, same hole. But again, similar grouping, a few more out, but I don't know this trigger. So they have different recoil impulses, and they also have a different trigger. So both of them, I think, are great concealed carry options, and I would feel good with either one. Both of them allow you to attach a red dot optic or some sort of reflex optic on their slides, which is awesome. They're already set up for that. The big advantage though goes to the SIG because it comes with iron night sights. The Glock comes with a plastic sights, which work, they're effective, but quite frankly, they're made out of plastic. I want steel, iron sights, whatever it is. So both good guns. Thanks so much for watching. Finally, and as always, stay safe.